the trans lobby group. Um, Martina and I uh, that you spoke to, uh, we have a group we founded about uh, 2001. Um, to uh, Actually, we founded that group uh, and a bunch of trans people. The government in 1998, October 1st, the Mike Harris so-called Progressive Conservative Party, and I always say so-called because uh, they weren't that progressive when they cut funding for sex reassignment surgery, which is also known as sex change surgery. And so for a lot, but for almost 10 years, people couldn't acquire that. And it's deemed a medical necessity by the World Health Organization, the American Psychological Association, and transgender or transsexuality is a considered a disorder in the diagnostical statistical manual, yeah. which is a DSM-4. Um, but uh, and the the recommended treatment um, for those who need it or desire it um, so uh, is sex time, time Toby's Act to amend the Ontario Human Rights Code to include gender identity. And yet four times later and maybe lucky 13 on June 13 we finally got it adopted into the legislature so we're we're pretty pleased about that not only pleased you know for what it means to have a success kind of say that'll be good on my resume <laughs> but it's what I'm seeing from other people um, and the happiness of people feeling this is a fundamental pillar for social inclusion into uh, Ontario society and, and an important step. Yeah. And so we're, and now we're here at Pride, celebrate and demonstrate. And so we still need a few things. We're going to demonstrate, but darn it, I'm dancing, I'm polishing <laughs> off my dancing shoes. And, and it's, a, it's a big thing. It's a huge ordeal because now you're included as members of society under the Human Rights Code in Canada. Well, and interestingly enough, we've been invisible in, in, in public policy, uh, invisible in just discourse. Uh, uh, most of what the public knows about transsexual and transgender people are we're either victims or perpetrators of violence, we're either portrayed in comedy or tragedy, and uh, um, as much as gay, the gay populate, gay and lesbian and bisexual population has also been portrayed in the media. And so that's why one of the things we like to do is talk to media, educate. You are our amplifier. You yeah. amplify the message. And so when people listen to this, we'll put a human face yeah. to the story. You know, we're human beings, but we've never really been like either male or female and somewhere invisible in public policy. We didn't have sex reassignment surgery. We can't change our legal legal papers, our document, legal documents easily, and, uh, and not clearly explicitly protected in human rights legislation, such as uh, gay and lesbian people are protected under sexual orientation 25 years ago, and it took us a long time, and we really need to thank people like Sherry DeNova who brought the bill forward four times. So in the 21st century, this is a big, uh, a big success. And does Gay Pride now stand more for um, to be yourself, to be more diverse? It, it could, uh, is that what it says to you now? Well, when we look at the communities that we, uh, that Pride has uh, uh, proposed, the membership, uh, we are so incredibly diverse. And so it's really important that the decisions that uh, 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 politicians or the state or, um, um, or our organizations, people in dis positions of decision making, should reflect the people uh, in the community. And it, Go on the subway, go and take the transit and look it around and you'll see people all shapes and sizes and colors and different outfits and you know that's a multicultural, a diverse uh, Toronto, a diverse Ontario and a diverse Canada yeah. and uh, where you've taken a step forward into social inclusion and uh, yuppie! Big step, big step forward for humanity really too when you think about it. Well, we're looking to World Pride is coming in 2014, and uh, now people will be welcomed as full citizens, as equal before and above the law. And, uh, you know, what it says to landlords, what it says to employers, um, to places where we access service like restaurants or, or, or shopping malls, um, it tells landlords and employers it's not only wrong to discriminate, it's now illegal to discriminate. Right, yeah. It tells young people wondering, as myself, who was totally yeah. felt shameful and guilty growing up, um, indeed there's a place for us. We are protected, we are loved, 
and the state said so. And, yeah. and that's got to be, you know, something like young gay people growing up not being able to marry uh, the person they love, gay or lesbian people, and now the whole shift in the generation knowing you can actually grow up and be yourself. And that's got to be a marvelous feeling and, and something that I think a whole generation of trans people will get. Uh, now the opportunity to experience and uh, geez, happy All pride. All personal questions you want. Okay. But whether I'm going to answer is another okay. thing. Okay. On a personal note, though, yeah. to to help people understand trans mm. trans culture. Yes. Um, yourself as a person, you feel deep down inside that you're a woman. Is that it? Deep down oh, inside. Thank goodness that wasn't too bad. I've had people ask personal questions about <laughs> you know my surgical status, and oh, that's yeah, not up for that. discussion. Dinner and a date. Okay, maybe we can start to talk about, you know, some personal stuff. But could you repeat the question? Again? Yeah, like deep down inside, to, to educate people about trans, uh, trans culture, deep down inside as a person, you really do feel like a woman in your soul. Is that, that, like, that's the reason why this, mm. you're doing this. Um, well, yes, uh, we would never pick, I would never pick this path because it was like something to do, like, a, like people pick a suit or, or yeah. decide what they're going to eat for breakfast. Um, Many people uh, experience from the earliest age and actually the requirement to have the surgical procedure or to live full time is usually from the earliest stage. And in my case, it was around eight years of old. Wow. Um, I was playing marbles with the boys on the Air Force Base when I was growing up. And you know, I remember this like it was yesterday, this moment. And the girls were playing, had this, their, the pearl, their mother's dresses and high yeah. heels when they were walking around. And it occurred to me, I should be over there playing with the girls. And what happened, and I was eight years old, playing and you know, and, and, and I'd never thought I was different until that moment. Because I went and asked my parents if I could play house with the girls and they said no boys don't do that and that was such a profound moment I'm remembering this so many years now I'm not going to tell you how many years later okay. but quite a few yeah. and uh, uh, you know it's a miracle that people like myself you know uh, the statistics are enormous of uh, trans people who attempt to commit suicide. I was really bad at it, yeah. and so I had to make a decision to come out and be myself. I've been welcomed with so much friendship, companionship, the community, and this is what we do at Pride, um, I think it gives a chance. I remember that first Pride I went to.